Hello all, this is your Biomed Pro, Sarah Maditya. It's been a quiet while since I recorded a video and here now I'm coming with a new video. So a lot of students have been asking me, like I'm a first year student, how do I choose my specialization and what do I do? Like what do I do my next third years? And this is a question many people have been asking me and I thought why not I record a video on it. So how did me, how did I choose a career in AI ML? How did Sijin choose a career as a sales engineer? So these are some of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. Without any further ado, let's just jump onto the video. So guys, I'm going to split this video into four different sections with the functions as I mentioned here. So we'll start with a guide map and then we'll move on to questions and then some domains and roles. And finally, we'll conclude with dish and flowchart. So now we'll just flowchart. So now we'll just look in depth about the guide map, basically the title of the video. So now if you can see the flowchart that I've mentioned here or the mind map, this is basically how I have designed um, a guide or a map that you can follow. So in order to choose your specialization or a domain, so I have just uh, kept four different um, uh, categories on which you can choose or on which uh, the basis or criteria you can use to shortlist your particular specialization. And the very first thing you need to go is interest. So it's, it's, I, it's very obvious, right? I don't need to say much about it. It's obviously about what you want to do and what you like and the curiosity. The thing which you like doing the most, the thing which makes you more curious is the one use of your specialization and the one you should do. I think I didn't need not say much about this. So the second thing I'm going to talk about is scope because you should you should think about something or uh, focus on something which has a scope, right? Uh, you should not be dreaming of some technology that is not even existing and then cannot be done. There is no use of doing something like that. So under scope, you know, I've put them in two categories. One is a location based scope and another is a time based scope. So the location based scope is basically the region. So where you want to look at. So whether is it um, in India or in abroad. So people studying, staying in India will look for India and other people who are wishing to go to abroad. So this is not specific like masters or um, job or it can be anything. So this particular thing is about the location only. So in abroad, the, some of the common places is US, UK, Europe, Japan, Australia, Singapore. So there are a lot of places, Russia and all. And I, I, I need not mention all these and I hope all of you guys know about this. So regarding this scope in the location criteria, you must think that the technology or the domain that you're choosing, does it have scope in India? So is it possible for me to practice and uh, like uh, do both theory and practicals of that particular thing in India? If not, where can I go in abroad? So uh, in abroad, which place is the best for that particular thing? So these are some of the things that you have to consider while looking for a location based scope. And the next one is a future or a time based scope. So that is based on your future plans. So what are you going to do with that particular um, technology or skill or specialization? So that I have put up in two categories. One is a research and second one is industry. So research is where people go for higher studies. They do PhDs and become professors or work as researchers. And industry is the opposite side of it, where you go in industry and work for a company and all those things. So the particular thing, you have to keep these in mind also. So that is the next direction, right? So once you have learned a particular specialization, you would either want to go in depth in it, then where you go for a master's. And after that, you feel this is quite good and I want to do something new or novel out of it. And that is where you do your own research work. That is a PhD and you um, like start working on a very in-depth, dense project, which has a lot of it is a very fine tune or a uh, in-depth version of what you have learned. It's a very specialized and core application of the uh, technology that you have learned. And you're working on something novel and bringing out something for the community. That is basically a high level research work that comes in PhD. And after that, you have two choices. Either you can become a teacher and preach all those concepts to uh, the students in a college or in any other places, or you can become a researcher. There are a lot of uh, private and government uh, institutions. So private means the companies which high, hire R&D engineers and comp uh, government reference to the uh, various research institutes like PRDO, then we have ICMR and we have a lot of other things. So these are the different places where you can pursue your research and serve for the community. Or on the other hand, you, let's say you don't feel research is your cup of tea, then go for industry, man. Always get a job. 
But when you go for an industry, you have to look at these particular criteria. The first is job availability. So how well is a job available for that particular specialization in different scales of companies? So first we have startups, then some mid scales and then MNCs are the very high um, uh, companies with having a large employee size, uh, uh, present in multiple companies and countries, all those things. And finally, you have governmental agencies anyways. So these are the different uh, places where you can um, look for a job and check for the job availabilities. And second one I would say is growth. So where would you stand in the next five to 10 years if you continue that particular thing as a career or as a profession? Where would you go down the lane is the question. And finally, salary. Salary is not important in the initial phase. That's why I have not mentioned it above. So you just need to mention, ensure that there is a decent amount of salary you come, but you need to make sure that you have a good growth. So mean, referring to your salary increases along with your years of experience or your position in the company. If there is not much of a growth and it is stagnant, then I don't feel it is much good to take that particular um, technology or domain to do a specialization. And the next one we would be going for is practicality. So practicality is something important, right? So you should be able to um, practice that particular uh, technology or the particular specialization. Just having a theoretical knowledge is of no use in this current world. So you need to ensure that you're able to work on some projects or do some hands on experience so that you can get benefit of it and you go in the further direction, either research or industry, wherever you go on. So in this, I have just put up them in four categories. First is mentorship. So you can start with a very local mentorship, meaning your college. So can my professor or are there any seniors or are there any research associates or any people who are in my college who know that particular um, domain in depth so that I can get mentorship from them. So what happens? Let's say I am going, I want to master AIML. So in mentorship, I will see if there is any person or any professor, seniors or uh, some researchers that are working in the labs or any other thing or some industrial experts who come outside to give lectures. So if any of them who knows this technology very well or this specialization so well, so that I can go and ask them, say that, sir, I am a newbie. I want to learn this. Give me a roadmap or how should I do? And if that person is your professor itself or a senior who you are in contact with, it's well and good, right? You can meet them every time and you can ask them whatever you want. The second one is um, equipment, maybe the correct word would be infrastructure. So whether the college has the infrastructure to support for you to do this particular specialization. So if you take biomaterials and also you need to develop new materials and you're working on 3D printing. So you need 3D printers. You need the lab setup with all the sterilization equipments, the various microscopes, SEM, TEM electron microscopes. So that's a very high level I'm speaking. But still, these are the different criteria that come in an infrastructure that you need to check whether it is available in your college. And third thing is funding. And whatever things I said doesn't come for free of cost, man. You need to pay and you need money for that. So you have to check the funding status of your college if they have anything, if they have the labs in good conditions or if you have the uh, uh, criteria to do that particular thing. That's where the funding comes from. So if you don't have the equipment, if the college doesn't have the equipment, if they have funding also, then we can try and push something out, right? And finally, it's a community. So even though we have a single mentor, uh, the community is something different man community is a bunch of students teachers industrial experts all coming together it's basically if in a very low level i would say the college club so every college has a club right so you might be having i triple clubs you might be having gdc clubs you might be having uh, maybe in specific house clubs and all those things so that club is basically a community so where you have a bunch of students who are joining a bunch of teachers who are assigned to it some industrial experts who come and do external workshops and all those things so you have to see if there is a community support for that because you will have a whole level of learning when compared to mentorship. But the difference is mentorship would be one to one, whereas community is many to one. You can interact with many, you can get to know many things and all those things, which is very full, very much helpful. So in community, you will have conferences, you will have workshops where industrial uh, people will come and um, teach whatever they know. Conferences where a lot of people combine together, show their paper presentations and all those things. And hackathon is obviously a new buzzword that many of you might be knowing, like project competitions where you go there and build products and all those things. So all of these kind of, um, components you can uh, put, I put up in practicality and ensure that if these are available and based on that, you can choose your um, particular domain. And finally, the learning curve. So I just put up as three questions. The first one is time needed to understand the concepts, meaning how much time can I uh, will it take for me to understand the basics? So this would be more important if you're not a first year student or maybe you're rather a third year student who just has six months or one year time to master something so that they can land into a placement or get a job. So that is one of the important things as a third year student, right? In that case, then you must focus on this part. So I should choose a skill 
or i should choose a particular specialization which helps me to uh, get uh, understood or get well um, um, hooked on of the concepts in a shorter period of time so that you become yourself place industry ready and you can get placed in the company for your appropriate job roles so that's what i've mentioned in three days if you're a first year student this not be a much of a big deal but still you need to keep this in mind so that's why if you see i would have uh, kept all this in a chronological order where interest is of the very first priority everything should come with of your interest and you should work you on your heart out only when you have work some uh, work on something you're interested you will put all your heart out and you will put your maximum efforts so that is the very first thing followed by scope and then practicality and finally learning curve so this is about the um, guide map that i have designed that you can um, use and ensure so that you can shortlist the technologies or the specializations that you're looking to work on so looking to work on so now we will move on to the second section which are called questions so what does this questions mean so if you can see i have made a table with um, some criterion and the corresponding questions so what is the need for this section siram is something you might be asking so what is this why i am why i have kept this is so once you have gone through the guide or map and you have gone understood all those things the next i would wish you guys is to question yourself like answer for those questions so these are the questions some of the questions you can obviously have some more questions also but try to figure out the answer for these questions that is what people call as explore so when you go to any person and ask so what technology can i choose or what uh, um, uh, specialization can i do they will ask you to explore but what does it mean by exploration exploration basically means to answer these kind of questions so you ask questions for yourself and you yourself answer the questions but for you to get the answers you need to search it some place and that process is called exploration so what what i am going to uh, go through is some of the common questions that i have coll uh, collected and curated there have, might be some more questions which you can stumble upon while you are going your own research and exploration the so very first thing personal interest the very it's a very straight forward question like do i re really enjoy, genuinely enjoy learning this topic do i like understanding this do i want to pursue my career out of this so these are the possible questions you might get and if it is yes then only you should provide to then you should move on to the next if not just drop it man but before that you have to know all those things so whatever things i'm going to mention right i want you guys to know what it is why it is present what it does after that only i want you to um, look on the personal interest because this video is all about choosing or shortlisting your specializations meaning you must have a prior knowledge of all the specializations and what it means at least a bit like know what it is that's all not nothing much next career opportunities this is one of the important things right so having interest is a good thing after that you have to look for career opportunities so will this domain or this particular specialization give me a job role either in research or in uh, industry or in any other place whatever you think that is not thing that is based on your personal interest but will it give me a career opportunity in the next 3 or 5 years look for a short term goal and then go for a long term goal a short term is if i study this within the next one it depends on your uh, since i put as a first year i have kept 3 to 5 years if you are a second year 2 years th third year one year that depends upon your time scale but within this period of like completing my education will i get a good job role that is the thing you need to uh, ask yourself and get the answer the sec sec the next one is research potential so like is some is this something um potential or viable thing for to, to do research upon so are there potential openings are there people consistently working on it if i get in a research field can i bring something exciting or interesting out of it how you can get how do you can get to know of this just look at the internet man you can just obviously ask ai tools this is the era of ai tools just ask what are the ground breaking research works done in your particular field and if you feel there is something which uh, is good enough and which you feel you can fit into then you have the answer for this particular question next industrial ecosystem which is basically the location based scope i said so yes it has a current uh, it has a current um presence so strong presence in my city or country so is it potential for me to carry out a career in this particular specialization in india if not abroad where in abroad so it can be either carrying uh, like pursuing your career or making you a master through education it can be whatever of those two but just make sure whether it happens in india or in any other country then the next one is mentorship and guidance as i already said is there someone i can learn directly directly is the important word that person you must meet that person he must be in, he must be with your contact so that you can learn from them directly and the next one is interdisciplinary scope 
so this means something you know uh, in real time when you go in industries you don't use a particular domain domain of specialization uh, just alone stand alone you combine it with other things you know that is called interdisciplinary so for example what i am doing so i am working on image processing and i am working on ai ml and i am working on generative ai and i am working a bit on software development so this is basically a, a combination of all right so that is what we mean as interdisciplinary so this will be very helpful for you guys when you go into the industry ultimately everyone is going to step into the industry one or the other time if not you will be going into the academia this question is not that much even for academy also it can be relevant because when you try to do research you don't do stand alone you try to combine it with other things right so irrespective of your career path you can just check whether you can integrate this domain with any other domain a very uh, standard example is ai man you can integrate ai with anything so let's say you are going to do biomechanics you can obviously integrate ai with it how biomechanics is about like understanding the mechanics of the biological components or you design some systems like orthotics or prosthetics you can obviously add an ai to check the sensor values and do some predictive analysis out of it and say what is the ultimate stress the metal or the particular uh, uh, orthotic or prosthetic can hold so this kind of thing is where ai comes with biomechanics so there is obviously an integration of ai but you can also check for any other integrations and see why because you have to keep your mind open regarding industry and you you we might not know what the industry expects when each company has its own working policies working uh, products and all those things so each of them might have a different um, expectations from the people they are hiring so if you have something like this then there are wide chances you might get selected in those kind of companies right and then the next thing is the long term scope so first we saw a short term scope for 3 to 5 years like it's an eligibility for a job role now we are going to go for a future scope like will my domain persist or where will this go so you can just look at the future trends so if i'm choosing ai you if you just check on the internet where is ai leading to it will obviously it will give you a clear picture so now we are at generative ai now it is going to agentic ai then we'll have this that 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 so that is how the future is going to go on and you must check that if i am updated in this or if i am moving in this direction will be it be, will it be good for me so can i just stand with this or do i need to um learn more that, that learning path is always there but you just need to check if uh, it is good for me to stay in this field in a longer scope what will happen that's the thing and next is project feasibility which already comes in the infrastructure and all those things as a student what can you do what kind of project so for example i can give a good example for this let's take ai and biomaterials so developing an ai project is kind of feasible it's kind of practically feasible as compared to a developing a biomechanic bio uh, material projects because developing a biomaterial you have to sit under the lab you have to do a lot of things which uh, might not be that much feasible for student it is possible if you have the will power but comparatively ai is quite better easy right so that is what i put up as project feasibility and next one is community and competitions do you have any clubs in your college regarding to that if not in your college you can check for some online clubs or communities or if there are any competitions or any uh, conferences or poster presentation any of thing are present is there is some activity going widely on that particular if you take ai it's a very it's a very hot spot activity there is a lot of things going on so it's, it's a lot of happening activity so you can see a lot of hackathons you can see a lot of project presentations you can see a lot of uh, conferences um, industry workshops and all those things so you can just check for all those things and finally i would say social impact so whatever that this that is ultimately based on you based upon you see i wanted to chase uh, i wanted to choose medical and biomedical because i wanted to build something that can serve the healthcare community and ai because i felt that it is a way i can use to build the product so you might have something in your mind and you might ultimately the ultimate purpose of us see i understand money is one thing but beyond that you might you might be having some impact or you might be having some ideology of your own right like why did you choose biomedical why did you even want to become a, a doctor in the first place because you want to serve the healthcare community and you want to treat the patients or improve the healthcare care or there might be something you might be having in your mind just make sure if that particular specialization aligns with your ideology so this is what i just wanted to say and these are the different questions just a generic list of questions you can ask even more questions to yourself try to ask the questions and majorly try to answer them also if you feel you have a clarity in answers for that particular specialization then i my friend i feel that specialization is the one for you and dear yeah, with that we have come to an end to the first part of choosing your specialization so i hope you guys could have enjoyed this content If you have any doubts, please do mention them in the comment section. Ask me anything you want. You can just ask any questions in the WhatsApp group. Me and Sijin are always open to answer your questions. Do like this video. Share this video with your colleagues, classmates, seniors, juniors, whoever you feel this video might be appropriate to. 
And finally, don't forget to subscribe to Biomed Bros. Signing off, your bro, Saramaditya.